All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Caramel Albino Ball Python. The Caramel Albino has been around for quite a long time. As a matter of fact, I actually went over to morphmarket.com and I saw some that were born in 2008. Pretty incredible. And it's actually a recessive mutation. So you need two copies of the gene for a visual. And even though it's an albino, if you were actually to breed an albino with a caramel albino, essentially what you'd end up with is you'd end up with normal looking snakes that are double head for albino and head for caramel albino and as far as the visual appearance I'd say it probably looks closest to an ultra male it looks really close to an ultra male but they're not compatible and it looks also looks really close to the monarch I've seen some caramel albinos that are really similar to the monarch although the monarch usually has a lot darker of a background it also looks really similar to the coral glow which is a co-dominant mutation although when the coral glow ages and matures it ends up as a completely different looking thing usually it's it's like a two-tone yellow with a whole bunch of freckles over it and you don't really see any freckling with the caramel albino. So today I want to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the potential of the caramel albino ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and this is what a caramel albino looks like. Pretty impressive gene. And I would say as far as caramel albinos, this is probably your typical caramel albino. They can vary quite a bit from one to the other. And I think where it gets its name, the caramel albino, it kind of has this caramel color in the background. It almost looks like the caramel candy color as far as you know some of the colors in the background. And it really has a lot of high contrast between the background and the whites. And a lot of caramel albinos you can actually see kind of a white outline around some of the patterns on the sides which is pretty cool and as far as being an albino if you actually look at the eyes it really doesn't have the bright red eyes that you'd expect in your regular albino it's definitely different than a regular albino and here is another version of the caramel albino take a look at this one this one is pretty amazing some of them are almost purplish color which is kind of weird it almost looks like a lavender albino if you're familiar with the lavender albino Essentially what it is, is it starts with a bright white background and as it ages and matures it kind of turns into a lavender color and it looks like it, with the caramel albino a lot of times you can get that appearance in some versions of the caramel albino but you don't always see it across the board. I'd say it's pretty unusual to get one as purple as this. Pretty amazing. And here's another one. This one is pretty amazing too. This is kind of a unique caramel albino. I don't know if it's a different line or if they're really variable in a single clutch. If you can get you know, like polymorphism where you get a whole bunch of different versions in the same clutch. Kind of like the bamboos, if you breed a bamboo to something else, sometimes you can get really variable looking bamboos. Some of them are really reduced and some of them are not reduced at all. And it looks like to me, from kind of what I'm seeing, it looks like these are different lines of caramel albino, where, you know, sometimes you can actually line breed for certain traits. And this one actually looks almost like a monarch, if you're familiar with the monarch. As a matter of fact, this would be like your poor man's monarch because the monarch is really super expensive and caramel albinos are not really that expensive and the monarch the i say the only difference between this and the monarch is the monarch is usually a quite a bit darker of a background it looks almost exactly the same as a matter of fact i've compared this to some of the lighter monarchs and it is really close which is pretty amazing so I kind of wanted to show you some of the other genes that we can mix in with the caramel albinos to show you the potential when mixed into some combinations. And the first one I want to show you is the spider. This is the spider ball python. And the spider gets its name from the spider web pattern coming right down the top of the snake. Pretty amazing. And the spider is a dominant mutation. So if you breathe this to something else, half the offspring come out as spider. And here's what happens if you work spider into the caramel albino. Take a look at this. This. this is a really amazing combination and the, the kind of the thing that strikes me on this is the really high contrast between the background and the spider web pattern right on the top and I really like that it really keeps a lot of the spider webbing and a lot of combos you know sometimes you mix spider into some combos and you lose some of the spider web pattern which is kind of a bummer because I really like kind of the the spider web pattern on a lot of the spider combos makes for a really a really striking combination. 
So here is the pinstripe. Now I have to say the pinstripe is one of my favorite jeans. It's a really bright gold jean. Pretty amazing. And it has this really strong stripe right down the top of the back. And it has a lot of times it'll have these little pinstripes right down the side of the snake. And a lot of times it'll actually have, you know, the, like the Roswell Gray alien heads on the side that are like all squished together <laughs> compared to like a normal where they're kind of separated. It's kind of an interesting jean and kind of a kind of a unique pattern as far as, you know, when you mix pinstripe into anything, you almost always can tell that there's pinstripe in there. And here's what happens if you work pinstripe into the caramel albino. Take a look at this beauty. That is a really amazing snake. And the first thing that struck me on this is the visual dominance of the caramel albino, just completely dominating the color of the entire snake from head to tail. Pretty amazing. And the pinstripe is also visually dominant too, so you can definitely tell that the pinstripe pattern is still in there fighting for dominance as far as the visual appearance of the snake makes for a really interesting combination. So here is the pastel, and the pastel is probably one of the most popular genes in all ball pythons. It is a really yellow snake. Sometimes it can be really bright yellow, sometimes it can be kind of faded, and this the, the pastel really reduces the pattern, and if you actually have a super pastel with two copies of the gene, it can really jumble up the pattern, it makes for some really crazy combos. And here's what happens if you work pastel into the pinstripe caramel albino. Take a look at this, I kinda wanted to show you, instead of just mixing it with the caramel, I want to jump right to the combinations so you can see what it does to the potential when mixing it in with other genes. And look at what it does with the pinstripe. It just really makes it explode. Really brings out a lot of the super bright yellows and brings the pinstripe to the forefront. Really starts breaking through the caramel albino. Probably one of the most amazing combos that I've seen. So here's another one, I kind of threw pastel in there too. This is the pastel and the lesser. And let me tell you, it's, it's, if you actually just add the lesser, it's not the same when you add pastel in with these other genes. Like pastel is the key ingredient when you're making combos with the caramel albino. And the pastel lesser is pretty amazing because you have kind of a dark background with a really super bright yellow. And that's from the combination of the pastel and the lesser together. And here's what happens if you work pastel lesser into to the caramel albino. Take a look at this. This is a really crazy snake and it's funny I just kind of stumbled on the pastel being the key to a lot of these combos and you look at the, the combinations without the pastel and let me tell you it is not the same. If you're working with caramel albino I'd probably work a lot with like super pastel working a lot of pastel into the combos and look at the contrast and the brightness on the snake. Kind of crazy and how it really jumbles up the pattern almost like an electric kind of a pattern right on the back makes for a really amazing combo so here is the pie. The pied is another recessive. So if you're actually working pied into the caramel albino, it's a double recessive project, which is a little bit tougher to work with. So if you bred a, a caramel albino to a pied, you'd end up with all normal looking snakes that are double head for pied and caramel albino. Then you'd have to breed the normal looking double heads together to get the visual. And it's a little bit discouraging, I'd say, for people that are new to ball pythons. Sometimes I've actually seen people jump into ball pythons, produce a whole bunch of heads and it's kind of disappointing because you have a whole bunch of normal looking snakes and it's kind of frustrating once you get down to like the the 50 percent or the possible heads which can be kind of challenging for someone who as a matter of fact if you're starting in ball pythons i would probably suggest going with like a dominant or co-dominant to start with so you can actually see all the genes and kind of build that excitement and when it comes to recessives i'd say it's more of a long-term project so it's, it's kind of weird how the price works so if you actually breed something that's like a really high-end co-dominant through your whole collection you could produce a whole bunch of them that are visuals and then you know it kind of flood the supply and then the prices can tank really fast versus a recessive you actually end up with a bunch of heads and a lot of times it, the recessives really hold their price over the long haul so if you're looking for more of an investment kind of a gene I'd say a lot of your, rec your recessives are probably your best bet so here's what happens if you 
Rourke pied into the caramel albino. Take a look at this, and this is kind of interesting because I've actually seen some that are really super bright yellow like this, and some of them that are not bright as yellow. And when it comes to pies, a lot of times you'll have a lot of variation in pies where you have like a low white pied. I'd say this is kind of a low white pied, and then sometimes you get a high white pied, and sometimes it's completely variable where you can have low whites and high whites all in the same group of hatchlings, which is pretty amazing. And I want to actually pull up another one here. I wanted to show you this one. Take a look at this. This is another caramel pied with no other genes in the mix. It's not bright yellow and it's high white. Really big difference between these and they're really amazing combinations. As a matter of fact, these are probably pretty expensive. Yeah, this one is actually, this one sold, well, it was back in 2016, but this sold for $1,500. Pretty amazing. So here is the clown, and when it comes to king of combos, the clown has to be number one as far as the king of combos for recessive genes. It's another recessive. So you need two copies of the clown to get a visual. And if you actually work a clown into the caramel albino, take a look at this. This is a crazy combination. <laughs> this is, you know, when it comes to clown, you work anything into clown, and you get some really breathtaking combinations. This is pretty amazing. The pattern pattern and the color on this. As a matter of fact, I took this one step further and I, I thought, hey, what happens if we work pastel into the caramel clown? And take a look at this. This is what happens when you work pastel into the mix. That is a really crazy combination. <laughs> For some reason, when you work pastel into clown, you get some really insane results. And the pastel with the caramel also works really well. And when you work it in with both genes, just one gene of the pastel makes a really huge difference in the visual appearance pretty amazing all right, so here is the Ultramelon. This is where things can get a little bit confusing. The Ultramelon looks almost exactly like the Caramel Albino. As a matter of fact, if you actually look back at one of my very first Caramel Albinos, as a matter of fact, I actually pulled one up here. Take a look at this. So this is the Ultramelon. I pulled up another one that looks almost exactly like it. Look at that. That is a Caramel Albino. And for me, it's like I cannot pick out the difference between the Ultramelon and the Caramel Albino. The Caramel Albino it looks like it may have a little more high of a contrast compared to the Ultramel, although they can really vary from one to the other. And if you actually take an Ultramel and you breed it to a Caramel Albino, you get double hets. You get het for Al Caramel Albino and het for Ultramel. And if you breed those two together, someone actually did it, and you get a double visual, a Caramel Albino, Ultramel. Take a look at this. And it actually has a nickname. It's actually called a Camarillo. <laughs> this is a Camarillo. This is the Ultramel Caramel Albino. Kind of a crazy combination. I would say this is probably one of the most difficult projects to work on because, you know, if you actually produce some Caramel Albinos and some Ultramels all in the same clutch, you'd have to have a really keen eye to pick out the differences between the two. And you really wouldn't want to make a mistake because if you did and you saw to someone else and they bred the, you, what you thought was an ultramel to their ultramel and it came out to be like a caramel albino or something they would produce all double hats which can get really confusing it'd be a really confusing project but it almost looks like you could pick out the differences and obviously you can because someone has produced it and you know kind of one of the other projects i've seen kind of down this road is if you breed like a tsk azanthic to a vpi azanthic and trying to get the double azanthic but the problem with that is if you actually produce the azanthics, you wouldn't know one from the other as far as the offspring. And it seems like people can actually pick out the caramel albinos from the ultramels if you have a really keen eye. Kind of an interesting project. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Kelly Williams asks... What happens if you breed a banana to a coral glow? And that is a very good question. So I think most people consider bananas to be the same thing as coral glows, although I have seen some differences in the hatchlings. Sometimes you can see like some are more browned out than others, and I think it really depends on the line of banana versus coral glow. And essentially what would happen is you could potentially produce a super with one copy of the banana and one copy of the coral glow. And where it gets a little bit confusing is 
if they look the same as hatchlings. You actually breed a banana with a coral glow. You produce a bunch of hatchlings that look like a banana slash coral glow. You don't know if, if it's one or the other. So you'd, essentially what you'd have to do is you'd have to sell all the offspring as banana slash coral glows because you wouldn't know which one is which. And a lot of people really like to keep the lines completely separate. If you start breeding them together, you pretty much wouldn't know one from the other unless you have really distinct lines and you can see the differences as a hatchling. And sometimes after they grow up from hatchling size, you really can't tell the difference because they go through a really big transformation. They start out with a lot of oranges and like a lavender purple color. And when they get bigger and they start maturing, they turn into like a two-tone yellow with a bunch of black freckles, which is pretty amazing. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.